Hey everyone, it's Leanna from Love Learning STEM. So I am really excited. Um, before I get in, I wanted to introduce myself. I am a STEM teacher at a district in Southern California. So I teach fourth through sixth graders STEM. Um, and I have been doing this for three years, going into my fourth year, and I see hundreds of students every single week. Um, in addition to that, I do also support kinder through third grade STEM teachers. So I go into their classrooms and help with behavior, curriculum, whatever it is. Um, but I love it. I love what I do. Um, it is absolutely my favorite thing. And I'm really excited to bring you um, five powerful teaching tools and strategies for teaching STEM while distance learning. Um, if you're anything like me, you notice that distance learning was just about the hardest thing. And if you're a STEM teacher or trying to teach STEM, there's a problem. Um, the biggest thing about STEM is that students are working collaboratively and working in their groups to solve a problem. Um, I noticed really quickly how difficult it was to be able to get this collaboration and problem solving when there was this kind of divide with the technology. But I'm telling you right now, it can be done and I'm here to show you some tips and tricks on how to implement this. Um, I did see a lot of fruit from my actual classes um, before the school year ended and so I'm really excited to share all this and it might actually produce even better results because when the space isn't hyper rigid the students get really creative and I got really excited seeing some of these projects my students um, produced and I'm actually going to be showing you some examples photos and videos in this session. Okay, so if you have any questions, we will be going through this session in under 30 minutes. So if you have any questions, please log on right after this is over on my Facebook Live. Um, I'll be going live to be able to answer any questions, if you have any uh, just concerns, or if you just wanna say hi, I'm gonna be there. Um, hopefully I'll be able to see you then. Okay, so let's get straight into it. For tool number one, I'm gonna be sharing with you um, the very first strategy is that students can have design challenges or should have design challenges with any materials. When we have design challenges in our classroom physical face-to-face, -face, we usually have set materials because we bring them in. We don't ask the students to bring them in unless they collect it. But when they're learning from home, we cannot expect our students to have exactly what we need for them to have. And it's just not fair to ask the parents to be able to go out and buy. Some parents will not be able to. Some are already under so much stress and, and making a trip to the store is just gonna add to their stress. And so what I've been doing is allowing my students to bring and use whatever materials they find from home. And I've been the type A teacher. I like to control the different parts of my engineering design process as I could. You don't have a lot of control, I know. But being able to let this go produced so many cool projects in my class this past year. We were in the middle of a vehicle restraint design, and so the students were supposed to create a restraint design to um, have for their vehicle to protect their egg. Many of you do this project. And so the students had to go and find stuff in their home to be able to use. And so in the very beginning, my students said, Miss Davis, we don't have anything. There's nothing we can use. And so I learned from a really great teacher, actually from my team. She actually took the, cam uh, the camera as she was live. She took her laptop around her home and she literally found this and this and she was showing the kids this water bottle she can use and why she can use it this toothpick and why she can use so she just started collecting things and this is exactly what i did um i did this with my live sessions uh i think at that point i had five fourth grade classes and so i did this live with all my kids and i collected just whatever i could in the classroom and we actually were able to um i was able to construct something right in front of them live and the students were able to see it see how something came of nothing and this gave so much uh like it got the creative juices going for my students because their final projects were so amazing um i'll be able to show you some of those right now Okay, so here are some examples of what our students created. Here's a compound machine using all home materials. We were just thrilled at getting these, um, and they all look different, but all of them are so perfect because they used everything at home. This one even has labels. They're trying to, this is a complex machine, machine try to save a take tiger. Um, here we have another one that students just created with whatever they had and they simply just got 
so creative. So strategy number two, it is to teach your students how to sketch digitally in Google Drive or whatever they're using, PowerPoint be it. Um, I found that a big mistake in STEM class is if you end the project and students have nothing to show for it. They don't have like a final culminating or steps following up for it. And it's really amazing having that finished project of an engineering journal. And so what I did is I had a digital engineering journal um, that I had my students complete. And within this engineering journal, there were many pages where the students had to sketch just like they do in my physical classroom. This is a big part of planning. This is a big part of redesigning and so, and even collaborating, show, sharing their own sketches to kind of get new ideas. And so what I had, um, because none of my students were really familiar with this technology, uh, what I did was I actually had a live session and I um, shared my screen where they were able to see my screen and I showed them how to make um, a car or a vehicle using the square, the circle features in Google, uh, let's say if I'm using slides, the little um, shapes. And there are so many shapes that they, they could get creative and kind of create their own shapes and make an image using those shapes and the, the colors they can use for it as like the border or the fill. And so I was able to find some really amazing um, sketches from the students and they included labels because I showed them how to create a line and how to include a text box. I didn't do this for them. So this is something I taught them and I know this is something you'd be able to do. And if you're struggling with creating um, or going live and doing that, what you can do is actually create a video to using Screencastify. Um, you can record your screen as you're creating some type of sketch. And if you need help with doing that, um, I have a YouTube video that I will link in the, um, in the document that you're actually downloading. It just teaches you how to use Screencastify. So here are a few examples of what my students created using those uh, digital sketch tools. As you can tell, they use different shapes. This represents cotton ball. This represents tape. Um, this one has different uh, shapes and colors they use. As you can tell, they shaded this in. Um, they angled stuff. We did a lot of modeling in the live sessions. Uh, this one has um, labels. And the students got pretty comfortable with it using and as you can tell it's not perfect the wheels are not touching the vehicle but you can very clearly see that the, they're putting their best effort in um so i was really pleased oopsie as you can tell every single one of them looks different but every single one of them is just so special and those that that could not um they actually just sketched it out on paper and then took a picture of it and uploaded that. Okay, strategy number three is show learning with a video. So in my classes, learning um, always ended in some type of multimedia presentation, whether it was Google Slides, whether it was creating some type of my mind uh, or a video. And I wasn't asking my students to use InShot, a new tool they'd never used. I was simply asking my students and I did give them choice. I said, you can either end your project with some type of writing reflection piece where you're answering to prompts. I did give them that. Or you can create a video where the students basically did the same exact thing except they weren't writing their answers, they were recording themselves and they also showed their design. And so I think out of all my students, no one turned in the essay and I've gotten so many videos and I can't wait to show you a couple of them. Um, now they weren't fancy. They were used either with a cell phone or a Chromebook and the quality wasn't the, that great, but my students were doing something so new and it honestly, I was just crying and bawling seeing these videos because they were going through the engineering design process. They were learning along the way and they were sharing it. And so I was able to share that with the, the rest of the students. Um, and so it was a really great collaboration piece where they were able to get back and forth with each other with these videos. Okay, strategy number four. What worked really well was creating module-like units for my classes, for my STEM classes. Um, I have my students once a week for an hour or so. And so when my students went distance learning or when we all went digital, it was they were just getting bombarded with a bunch of assignments left and right from their homeroom teachers if they had 
um, any other random teachers teaching them. They were just getting all the assignments thrown at them in these Google Classrooms. And so what I did that really helped was create these um, physical spaces in Google Classroom. And I can really only speak to Google Classroom users because that's what I use. I don't know if Seesaw works this way. You can always go to my Facebook Live and we can talk about it. But I know Canva or Canvas, I'm sorry, is module-like learning. So Google, you can create a space kind of like that. And so what I used was I created topics, which were the like the folders that would uh, the assignments would go into, and I would have week one, and I would have a linear progression of what I wanted my students to complete. It always started with like the objectives for that week, and then it went into, and I thought about this, a lot about like the universal design for learning. I included everything from YouTube links, from videos of me teaching, to a PowerPoint presentation. So they would go one in a row, they would know to go progressively down, and the end of the unit would be some type of assessment. So here's what uh, an archive class looks like. I had my links at the very top, so my students always had access to them. And then I had my week. So week five, I separated it. So you could tell it's um, over here with the date. And then I always had the same start here. And I talked about the objectives for the week and even the um, office hours. And then I went into the check-in, the science activity questions. And every week was very similar, as you can tell right here. And it worked really well for all my student groups. OK, so strategy number five, we are at the end. Um, so. One thing is web quests. One of my favorite things I've come across and started to do in my classes. Uh, as a STEM teacher, you know that you are kind of like a fly on the wall. You're facilitating and you're walking around and you're not really like the main attraction in the classroom. But you're even taken back even more during distance learning because now the students have to make a decision to log on, click, read, learn, and they don't have teachers threatening recess or PE, thank God. But um, the students have the choice and the autonomy to be responsible for this like learning space. And WebQuest actually is one of my favorite things because they are responsible for going through this like scavenger slash uh, mission that they go through to do their learning to complete this this goal or this or to problem solve. And I am gonna walk you through one of my web quests, but I, I, I love these because the students can go at their own pace. And if you have this for wh one whole week and they're learning about, let's say, renewable and uh, non-renewable energy, and they, you, they do some type of design after they learn these concepts, the students go at their own pace and learn by using, um, there, there's a process that I'm gonna be putting in your document and actually I can read it. They go through the introduction, the task, the process. They go through the resources to learn all these things. And then towards the end, there is a, an evaluation and a conclusion. And I don't have those memorized because they're kind of online. And there are many uh, ways you can create it, either in slides or, or Google Forms. They're quite simple to create. Um, you just need some type of problem that the students need to solve and you input data where they need to go and read or watch or they can learn from their peers if there is some type of jigsaw activity. Um, it's one of my favorites and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Okay, so here's one of my web quests. It starts with um, a title page where students write their name and it goes into the problem right away. Um, basically, the students are, uh, they take the place of a mayor and they get a me memo from one of their um, townsmen and there's an issue and there's more background information about um, we're just empathizing right now with, uh, if you're familiar with that in the engineering design process. And then the students um, get more information on what the task is. It says here, by the end of this web quest, you will have found a clean renewable energy source that the, you can replace the fossil fuel. And so the students need to now learn about the different uh, renewable energy. So these are the questions that I want them to answer. And then they start watching this video and answer the question here and they keep doing some learning so they go at their own pace so some students i know will finish this in one day and some students will take possibly a whole week and it gives them information they have a link to click and then it gives them very specific questions to answer as they finish reading that article and then here um, it says here find one of your energy sources and click the link below so they actually have to choose one of these and then answer these questions about them right here and so, as you can tell, um, and then they do a second energy source, they're, they're trying to get 
answers and a third one. Oh, and a fourth one. <laughs> and then they go into their writing activity. I do love to have implement writing in STEM. And so with all their previous answers, they get to actually create their own writing. And that is um, that with their writing, they're actually solving the problem of choosing which renewable energy source to choose for their town as the mayor. And so they get a finishing memo from a townsperson. And then that's about it. Okay, so that's it, everybody. Um, there is an amazing opportunity. All of my STEM challenges are going to be 50% off during this conference. And they are completely editable. And the students have a great old time uh, in putting their images, sketches, and videos within these digital um, resources. So the principal versions are editable, but the digitals are not. Um, so here's a title page where the students can input their text. And it goes on to explaining to the students that today they are an engineer and they're going to be going through the engineering design process. Um, and the engineering design process explained here is written here and explained over here. And here are some suggestions for the students to be able to use these materials. And it goes straight into the ask, what's the problem? So the students are stranded on a deserted island and need to get back to the land. The only pr problem is that they don't have a boat. And so in this one, they're supposed to create the boat. And here they ask, the, they answer the ask part. And um, I have the criteria and constraints here are the guidelines and restrictions and the, the students can use five pieces of materials and it could be any five pieces of materials and it's really exciting to see what the students get but here they just simply write down what the guidelines and restrictions are and then they go into um, explore which is how can you solve your problem it's the plan or the the think stage uh, it, they can also search ideas on how to make a floating boat with everyday materials and here they can write down their ideas in the model stage now this is where they get to sketch um, their design and i included a page with an example of what it can look like so they can use um, the lines, boxes, anything that looks like that and include it here and you can use these shapes to create that sketch. And in the test stage, the students are testing their design by placing it in a boat or in a bin of water. They then place four quarters into the boat and they answer these questions and they evaluate or the test step. Lastly, they get to share what they learned. How did they try to solve the problem? Um, so they answer these questions and here they can either write it out or again, either take a photo or a video and enter it right here. And I hope this helps you um, into what a digital STEM challenge can look like. Um, and I'll see you soon. But I wanted to thank you all so much. Um, it's been fun. I hope you use these during the class. And I will see you on my Facebook Live right now. Bye, everyone.